Welcome to Daydreams of Quilts on YouTube. I'm Anita and today I am showing you how to make the Tiny Treasures basket and tray. It's a free pattern from Noodlehead and I'll link to it in the description below but here's the tray and if you're using directional fabric just be aware that your one side of basket will have the print upside down so if you don't like that and you want it the right way up all the way around then don't use a directional fabric use one where the print is tossed or mixed all over in all directions but I don't mind I'm just gonna have this facing one way on the shelf so my plants will be the right way up on this basket so this one's the tray and then there's a larger basket I'm going to need to download the pattern because there's a little template in it that you need and you're going to need Peltex from Pellon and also the pattern calls for craft fuse but I didn't have that I just used Decoville for mine okay so let's get started okay so this is what the cover looks like for the pattern nice you're gonna need to cut um, an outer and a lining and also your craft fuse or Decoville and your Peltex. All of them are cut the same size, which is in the pattern. Um, then you're gonna need this template that's in the pattern. And we are going to trace that template into the four corners of the interfacing. So I'm just using a friction pen, but it doesn't matter because it's going to be in the seam allowance. So whatever pen or pencil you want to use. So we need to trace these darts on all four corners. And you're tracing on the dull side. The shiny side is the glue side, the, the fusible side. So you want to be tracing on the not shiny side and then with the Peltex, there's a, a rough texture side and then just this fleecy side. You want to be on this fleecy side, the side that doesn't have the fusible glue stuff on it. Okay, so trace all four corners on both pieces of interfacing and then we will cut them out. Okay, so once you have the template traced onto your Peltex and your Craft Fuse or Decoville, you can cut out all four corners. And I would save these. For, they're handy for putting snaps into wallets and other things like that. So don't throw this out because it's not really cheap. I got my interfacing from Emmeline Bags here in Alberta. So I will link to them in the description below. And all of my fabrics are from Studio 39 Fabrics, also in Alberta. I don't think she has the... Um, linens linens and canvases that I'm using but she has got lots of new stock in like so much new stuff so I will link to her shop in the description as well okay so I will keep cutting on the other one as well and then we're going to fuse these to our fabrics okay so I'm over at my ironing board here um, you're going to need to iron your trim around the top of your basket. You just iron it in half and then you fold the two raw edges into that center fold like one at a time and press all the way down the strip and then refold it back in half and press. And that's your binding. Uh, so you're going to need to press that. And then for the basket, the Peltex goes on the lining and the Decoville or Craft Fuse goes on the outer fabric. 
So I usually just line this up on the back side and then I flip it over to press it because this stuff probably will melt under the heat of the iron if you press directly on it. And obviously I have the the glue side against the fabric, not against the ironing board. Make sure you check that. And I'm using lots of steam. And then you just check with your fingernail, make sure that it's adhered to the fabric. I'm just gonna give it one more press. And then the outer fabric, the same thing. Decoville has instructions to, to use a damp pressing cloth. Okay, I'm checking for the shiny side. I'm putting the shiny side down against the back side of my fabric. And then I'm gonna flip it over. But I am just using steam today. I think a damp pressing cloth probably would be helpful, but I did it with just steam earlier on my other little tray and it worked, so let's try that. So once we have these all interfaced, we are ready to sew those corners. So we'll head over to the sewing machine. Okay, so to sew the corners, we're going to line up the edges of the interfacing just by looking at it from the side and we're going to sew just right along right next to the interfacing but not through just right next to it and then we're going to trim with our scissors a half inch seam allowance And remember to backstitch at the start and stop of your seam. Okay, so for each corner, we're going to do this. We're going to sew right next to the interfacing. Then we're going to trim a half inch away. And then on this corner here, we're going to clip in. So get some little thread scissors like these or embroidery scissors and clip almost up to the, the stitch line, but not through, okay? And then we can press our seams open. So we're gonna do that on all four corners of the lining and the outer fabric. So here's what the lining looks like when it's ready to go. So I'm gonna switch over to the little tray now. Okay, so now you put your lining inside your outer. Um, you need to turn it, turn your outside fabric right side out and your lining is also right side out. And then you're gonna put these two wrong sides together at the corners at those seams that we made. And we're gonna go all the way around and match up all of those corners. I'm switched over to the little tray cause I had one ready to go here. So this takes a little bit of finessing to get all of this lined up and ready to move on to the next step. But in the end, I think it's worth it. Now in the pattern, it does not say to baste around this upper edge, but for my own sanity, that is what I'm doing. I'm gonna get all of this lined up 
and clipped in place. And then I'm going to baste around the upper edge with an eighth of an inch seam allowance just to hold everything in place for the next step. Because this is tricky. I, it's already tricky to line it up. I think it'd be even more tricky to try to sew it without basting the layers together first. Okay, so I'm gonna, oop, I need to do this side. So I'm gonna stitch all the way around with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Before I put that binding on. So to do that, I'm going to sew on the inside of the basket. And I'm just gonna line up the edge with the eighth of an inch mark on my machine. And then we're going to take our binding piece and open it up. And we're going to fold this over by half an inch and finger press it. And I'm going to start on what for me is the back of the basket where my little plants are upside down. Just over near a corner. Now if you're planning on hand binding this, the instructions say to cut this binding piece at two inches wide I think you should cut it at two and a half I mean that will make it a little bit larger on the top of your basket but I found on the first one that I made that it was basically impossible to cover this first row of stitches which you would want to cover on the outside I think if you had it two and a half it would be only a quarter inch bigger on the outside edge but it would be easier to work with so that's if you're hand binding. I'm going to machine bind and I'm going to change up how the instructions are. Like she says to stitch right here on this first fold. And I'm going to do that, but I'm going to set my stitch length at three or three and a half. And I'm going to stitch all the way around and then I'm going to be taking those stitches out at the end because as I said, they show at the end, for me anyway, maybe not for everybody. So we're gonna go all the way around the top in, in that first crease. Okay, and then once we get back to this first little folded edge, which mine has come unfolded, I'm going to put a clip here. We're just going to overlap that by about a quarter of an inch. We're going to trim off our excess binding. We're going to fold this all over to the other side. Now if you can get it to cover that seam that we just made, see this seam right here, we want to cover that with this binding. And at this point you can hand stitch with a binding stitch or a hidden stitch all the way around. Or you can do what I'm doing, which is machine stitch it. And if your row of stitches shows, like mine did on my first basket or first tray, then um, you can just unpick them. And because we set that stitch length fairly long, then it'll be easier to unpick them with your seam ripper. So yeah, mine are gonna show, I think, on this side. They're showing right here. 
So I'll just pick those out with the seam ripper. But if you're making a lot of these, like say for a birthday or Christmas or Mother's Day, maybe they're party favors. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm not going to sit there and hand sew all of these edges down. So we can go around very carefully and top stitch it down with our sewing machine and then pop out those stitches that are showing but it'll be fine because it will still cover on the inside and our binding will still stay in place even if we take out that first row of stitches Oh yeah, see it's really showing right here. I think bias binding, if you had some on hand, might be easier because it would stretch. All right, so, so for sewing this by machine, I'm gonna turn it inside out so that I'm on that inside again for going around. So yeah, for suggestions, I would say maybe trim your, your inner facings a quarter inch smaller and make your binding half an inch wider and then you won't have to unpick seams like I am. So we're just gonna top stitch all the way around. Okay, and then we're just going to pop this right side out again. So anywhere that you have that seam showing, you can unpick it. So I'm just going to go around and pop all of these. But if you don't want to do this, you could cut your binding wider to two and a half inches wide. And that should cover this. So when you're done unpicking, you should have a nice finish like this. And it does stitch down on the inside too. And then we just need to put these little tabs on. Okay, so to do these little tabs and handles, I am using Chicago screws because I don't have a rivet press. But if you have a rivet press and rivets, then you're set. You can just use that. I'm using Chicago screws also from Emmeline Bags. And they have two parts. This is the part that sort of shows on the outside of the bag and it's just got like a hollow chamber with threads for the screw. And then the other side has a screw that goes in there and that goes on like the wrong side. And I'm using cork for my tabs and handles. Uh, the pattern calls for leather strips. If you're gonna be really loading this up with stuff and, and carrying it around by the handles, then I would probably suggest leather. The cork should hold up, but just in case. Um, so we wanna find the center is at about 2.5 inches and I'm using this crocodile um, hole punch and I'm using the, the bigger hole there's a small hole and a larger hole I'm using the larger hole because that fits these Chicago screws perfectly and then I'm just punching another hole in the tab but if you don't have this tool, um, you could use an awl or another type of hole punch. Okay, and if you want to, you could put fray check on the, the hole to keep your fabric from fraying. I'm not too worried about it because it's gonna be covered by this tab. So then we just put 
line up our hole on the tab with the basket or tray and then put our outside piece of the Chicago screw then on the inside just put the tab down over that and then we put this inside screw piece on here and then we just screw it down with a screwdriver so this is what it looks like when it's finished so if you have a rivet press then I would use that but for people like me that don't have a rivet press you could use Chicago screws so there you go the finished tray so thanks for sewing along with me today I hope you had fun making your baskets and trays I'm going to keep going on that larger one with the cats on it I think it'd be great for holding balls of yarn and skeins of yarn. So um, I think maybe some of these might become Mother's Day gifts too. Thanks for sewing along. Don't forget to click like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more videos from Daydreams of Quilts.